Hey everybody, today we are looking at section 5-6, which is inequalities in two triangles. So in the last section, we talked about one triangle and how the largest side is across from the largest angle, the smallest side is across from the largest side, or the smallest side is across from the smallest angle. And what we're looking at today is what happens when we look at that in two triangles. So what we're going to be looking at today is notice that these two sides are congruent and these two sides are congruent. That is going to be true in everything that we do today. When we compare two triangles, two sides will have to be the same length. So what our hinge theorem says is that if I know that angle A is bigger than angle B, then the side across from angle A has to be bigger than the side across from angle B. And the reverse is also true. If I know that this side is bigger than this one, then this angle across from it is going to be bigger than this angle. All right, so that is your hinge theorem and your converse. Again, make sure you know that the two sides here have to be congruent in order for this to work. So let's take a look at some examples. All right, when I look at these two triangles, I know that these two sides are congruent, and then we have our reflexive side here that is congruent. So when I want to compare these two measures, I'm going to write the measure of angle PQS and the measure of angle RQS. Okay, so PQS is this angle right here, and RQS is this angle right here. So what I want to look at is, okay, let's look at the sides that are across from them. PS is going to be bigger than SR. So that means that the angle across from PS is going to be bigger than the angle across from SR. And I realize that I wrote a 2 over here. That's not a thing. Okay. Um, so that means that this angle is greater. So when you're comparing the two um, measurements, they're looking for greater than, less than, or equal to. All right, so let's take a look here. I want to compare segment KL and segment MN. All right, so I know that LM and KN are congruent, and again, I have my reflexive congruent side here. So looking at angle MLN is bigger than angle LNK. So that means the side across from the bigger angle is the bigger side. So that means that MN is greater than KL. Remember that you can also write these as KL is less than MN. That's perfectly acceptable. It does not matter. If you have questions on that, go ahead and write that down on your notes now. All right, the next thing that we're going to look at is finding a range of values. So what happens when we have a variable right here? So again, let's look at our two triangles. I know that UV and VW are congruent. And again, I have this reflexive TV that is shared. So I know that since this is 25 and this is 24, that 45 has to be bigger than this angle. So I can set up that 6Z minus 3 has to be less than 45 because, again, 45 is that larger angle. Okay. The other inequality that I'm going to set up is that I know that in order for this to be an angle, for the angle to exist, it has to be greater than zero. So then I know that 60 minus 3, the measure of that angle must be bigger than zero. All right, so this is, these are the two inequalities that I'm going to solve. So we're going to add 3 to both sides here. We're going to get 6z is less than 48. And when I divide both sides by 6, I get that z has to be smaller than 8. All right, then over here we're going to add 3 to both sides, and I'm going to get that 6z is greater than 3. Divide both sides by 6, I get 3 over 6, which we need to reduce to being 1 half. So when I write my range, remember, start with the smallest value and then end with the largest one. So z is going to be between 1 half and 8 in order to be greater than 0, but still smaller than 45 degrees. And again, if you have questions on that, go ahead and write them down now. Oop, too far. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is kind of applying this in real world situations. So what we have here is we've got one of the swing rides at a carnival and we're showing the, the two pictures are showing the ones at two different speeds. Um, a is going to be at a slower speed and B is going to be at a higher speed. 
I want to know which rider is farther from the base of the tower. Based on the picture, it should be really obvious that it is rider B, but let's talk about why. Okay, because I know the tower doesn't change height. I know that the length of the chain that they're swinging from is also not going to change. Okay, um, but when you're at a slower speed, this angle right here is going to be a smaller angle than this angle right here. Okay, so the answer is B because A U S E, um, the angle. is greater and again that's not really a great explanation but it's just kind of our easy write down to help us remember of what's going on just remember that this angle is larger than this one because the rider is farther out all right any questions go ahead and write that down now now if you would for me please go ahead and pause your video and do these four problems for me okay so pause your video now and then when you come back, we will take a look at all of these. Okay, so go ahead and take a look and check your work um, and see how you did here. Um, so what we're looking at here is because we know EF is greater than EH, that the angle across from EH has to be greater. Um, here, this angle is greater than this one, so this side has to be greater. And then we look here, I know seven is smaller than eight, so that the two X plus eight has to be smaller than the 25 degrees. Okay, so I know that if I subtract eight from both sides, this is what I get for X. But remember that it has to be an angle, so that it means it needs to be greater than zero. Now I put four in here just to kind of take a look and see if you could apply the same principles because it's with sides, which we didn't do an example of. But when we look here, I know that 5x or 5x, um, 53 is going to be smaller than 62. So the side across from it has to be smaller than this one. So 5x minus 6 has to be smaller than 9. Okay, so when we solve that, we get x is smaller than 3. But again, the same concept is over here with the angles. In order to be a side and in order to exist, it has to be greater than zero. So I set up that inequality as well um, to get here. So if you have any questions on those, go ahead and write them down now, and we will take a look at them the next time I see you. Hope you guys have a great day, and see you in class.